Okay, I'd like to call to order this December 17, 2020, a meeting of Springfield Historic Commission. Um, Commissioners Walsh, Duquette, McFarland, Finn, and Kroll are present. Any other commissioners? I miss anybody? There are no tabled items. Uh, let me go over some of the public commentary part. In order to enable municipal government to continue its important work during the COVID-19 pandemic, while assuring both city employees and citizens can satisfy CDC social distancing guidelines, the City of Springfield is providing public notice that it will conduct a public hearing utilizing remote technology. Uh, to view the public hearing, it's on the Focus Springfield Community TV website. Uh, public commentary will be also taken in two segments. The first public comment period will take, prior, take place prior to the meeting discussion. The second public comment period will take place after the meeting and will remain open for 24 hours after the meeting. To provide for public comment in writing, mail Springfield Historic Commission, 70 Tapley Street, Springfield, 0104, or email A. Allen, that's A-A-L-L-E-N, at springfieldcityhall.com. Uh, to provide for public comment by voicemail, the number is 413-750-3223. Messages received will be played at the Historic Commission hearing or at the continued hearing date. All commenters should state their name, address, and company organization affiliation in addition to the items their comment pertains to. Voice messages received 24 hours before the hearing will be put into the public record during, during the hearing and comments after will be entered at the next continued hearing date. Voice messages are limited to two minutes. Uh, okay, so for, for petitioners or anybody who's gonna comment, when, when it's your turn to speak, please give your name and address uh, before you start. And that would be awesome. So uh, we're, it's, we're, this is the application for 228 <laughs> Street, Springfield Museum Corporation, an application for a certificate of non-applicability to install a solar electric panel. This is a continued hearing. Um, who's here representing the, oh, Rustin, okay. Are there any, are there any uh, ad additional things you'd like to uh, put before us today? Uh, no, just to mention that uh, just from our preliminary analysis, it doesn't seem like there's another uh, route or option that we have other than to have the conduit on the exterior of the building and uh, we've discussed it with uh, Rich Lyon, who said that we are going to match the color and, and paint the conduit to match the exterior of the building. Okay. All right. Any other commissioners have questions of the petitioner? Hearing none, I'd entertain a motion to the accept the, certificate, the application for a certificate of non-applicability for the installation of solar panels with the conduit being painted to match the exterior of the building. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Okay, any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, I'll call the roll. Uh, Commissioner Kroll? Yes. Commissioner Finn? Yes. Commissioner McFarland? Yes. Commissioner Duquette? Yes. And Commissioner Walsh is yes. Um, so that passes. Uh, you'll be all set with your for your uh, solar panels. Great. Thank you all very much. Well, well, thank you very much. Appreciate it. And the Commissioner Walsh, just for the record, we did not receive a letter for that particular matter. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and jump in, jump in early. Uh, is Piney Woods Avenue here? The petitioner yet? He, he is not on the call. I'm not sure if you guys okay. want to render a decision whether he's... No, we'll just go. Well, we probably could. We'll just go to skip it for now. Okay. So we're going to go to 208 Florida Street replacement windows. This is an application, the continued uh, hearing for the application of certificate of appropriateness uh, for 208 Florida Street. They gave us uh, their proposal with no change size changes or no changes in color and the windows that if i remember correctly that these window replacement windows are have been previously approved by the commission is that correct so far 
that's correct on my is that correct on your part okay any commissioners have have any other questions or or, or comments relative to this application nope. nope hearing none then i'll just ask uh, entertain a motion to accept the application for a certificate of appropriateness of two way florida street for the replacement windows as proposed um what are they re replacing 38 windows with a trim line dr 200 replacement window that's correct okay so moved so moved commissioner kroll motion and a second second okay is there any discussion on the motion we're satisfied with the style and the color okay hearing no discussion i'll call the rule for the vote commissioner kroll yes commissioner finn yes commissioner mcfarland yes commissioner with duquette yes and commissioner walsh is yes um thank you very much you're all set you'll be able to move forward with that thank Mr. you very walsh. much uh, i'm sorry not to cut you off but we did not receive a letter for this item either <laughs> let me let me change the order uh, <laughs> Um, and there was no public commentary on the item. Thank you. Yes. Uh, so Piney Woods Ave is still not on. No, I'm not seeing any new people. Uh, let me just pick, pull that one up for a second to see what we were dealing with here. Um, this was the installation of electrical ch vehicle charging point port on the side of the house. I think we could actually move forward with this if, if, uh, if someone, if any of the commissioners are not comfortable moving forward with this, then we just, just don't entertain a motion. That's all. There, uh, there is also a letter in support. Uh, yeah, the, I was gonna say, isn't there more than one, isn't there? Or is there just one? Just one letter. Um, Miss Ka Kathleen Plant. Okay, hold on, I'm not seeing it here. Well, I'm not seeing it. Do you have? Do you have it? I'll, I'll read it out. Yeah, um, somebody could read it into the record, please. States, uh, hi Alvin. I want to voice my approval for the electric charging station at the Olkin family is re is requesting on Piney Woods. They are directly across from me. I think it's a great idea and won't be at obtrusive at all. Best, Kathleen. Okay. Thanks, Alvin. Um, any other questions or? comments on this uh, application? Hearing none, I'll entertain a, a motion to accept the application for certificate of appropriateness for property at 151 Piney Woods Ave to install electric vehicle charging port on the side of the house. So moved. Okay. A second. Motion. Thank you, David. Uh, any discussion on the motion? Um, our, is, I, we didn't hear any concerns in the initial hearing. Uh, nothing. Okay. Then let me just call the vote. Uh, Commissioner Finn, I mean, Commissioner Kroll? Yes. Commissioner Finn? Yes. Commissioner McFarland? Yes. Commissioner Duquette? Yes. And Commissioner Walsh is a yes. Um, yeah, so they'll just have to let them know that we approved it. Um, Okay, so that, that's a change. No new public hearing issues. We have the next is the, uh, the next one is 169 Princeton Street, a demolition delay. Pull that one up. Just to so uh, understand, you guys are voting as to whether you want to waive the uh, nine month demo delay period. Correct, right, whether or not, not to keep it, but to waive it. Yes. Um, yeah, so 169 Princeton, it says house is badly destroyed by a fire on 10820, unable to afford the cost for total rebuilding, unable to obtain a second mortgage, disabled and on disability, 60 years old, the property needed work even before the fire. Please allow request for demolition. Please see attached photos. Did all the commissioners should have gotten the, the attached photos in their packet. 
Uh, there is, I know there is substantial uh, public commentary on this. Um, let me see what I have here. I have, let me read this, this first public commentary uh, to the record here. It's uh, dated December 15th. Greetings, Alvin. I've been awaiting material on the Princeton Street matter, but I thought I would pass along that we have several people interested in speaking in opposition to allowing this house to be demolished as it seems very restorable. In addition, one of our members is ready to take it on as a project if arrangements can be worked out. In support of this, I would just observe that many houses more apparent damage have been successfully restored in the past, including 174 Bodwin Street, 60 Buckingham Street, and 294 Bay Street. What arrangements should be made to speak at the meeting, and would it be possible to get contact information as we could attempt to work with the owner to keep the pipes from freezing if possible? Please contact me. Uh, so, it's, I mean, parts of that aren't relative to, to the, uh, it, but it is uh, a letter in support. Um, I'm gonna, let me just try to pull up. I have another one here. I'm going to try to Hopefully I have it hidden right here so I can just pull it up and read it in. Hang on a sec. Okay. I just wanted to say one thing uh, in, in regards to that um, first um, commentary that you, uh, well, my name is Foster Dwight. Uh, and your address, Foster? Uh, 1820 Eldridge Street in Springfield. Yep. And I'm the owner of 169 Princeton Street. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Um, that 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 commentary commentary you just read sounds very familiar to someone approaching my wife here at my house in on uh, Elder Street, requesting uh, the same thing to come in and uh, you know uh, yeah yes pipes and everything and she told she called me about it because I was actually on Princeton Street um, and then when I got home. Uh, Today, um, well, actually, it was yesterday. I was starting my snowblower, and that then that same person came up in my driveway, wanting to discuss, uh, you know, Princeton Street again. Okay. And uh, I just wanted you to note that that I, I have been approached. Uh, I, I feel pretty inappropriate to you know approach my wife and my son like that, but well, uh, I. Um, I apologize, Foster, for interrupting. We're, we only, we're, we're required to enter into the, you know, we're, we operate under the open meeting laws and we're required to put things in the record. You know, I can't edit them for content. And I also, we don't have any, you know, if somebody approaches you about the potential of saving the house, I understand how you feel about that. But it's not something in our purview necessarily, because there's going to be a couple more letters we're going to read shortly. So, okay. Um, okay. But after we're after, let me enter these into the record, Foster, and then we'll give you time to talk to us. Okay. Be okay. Yeah. Right. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Sorry um, for the interruption. No, you're you're welcome to. This is what we're talking about. Your property, so you can you know just I mean you can interrupt again if you feel that you need to if something said, but just keep okay. in mind I want to enter these because we're required to do this. Okay. And I will give you time. You know, so if anything gets read in that you want to comment on. Just feel free to. But let me pull this other one up. There's, this is from the, the McKnight. Uh, don't hold it. Let's hold on. It's, there's more in this. I'm, I'm only going to enter the part into the record, which is relative to this property. Yes. And this, this is from... The, the McKnight CDC and 1030 Worthington Street. And so let me read this. It's, parag it's page three, paragraph A. Uh, I would like to ask you immediately reject the application now pending before you to allow demolition of the house at 169 Princeton Street, located in the area of the uh, neighborhood relevant to the African American aspect of our history. This is a significant house and it should be restored rather than being demolished. In addition, please do whatever needs to be done to permanently prevent demolition and support restoration of that house should of that house should be done, even including funding or expansion of the local district to include the property. Uh, so that's that one. Um, Alvin, are there others? So, uh, I'm sorry, I missed the first letter that you read. Um, 
I read uh, David Gaby's letter. David Gaby, okay. Um, we do yeah. have one from Jim Boone. Oh yeah, that's right. I do have that one here. Sorry, it just got buried in my paperwork. Okay, and this this is another one from Jim Boone, 97 Florida Street, McKnight, dated December 15th. Uh, dear Historic Commissioners, I would hope that this fire damaged house would be given ever opportunity to, to be saved from demolition. Many houses damaged by fire have been saved for reuse. I would call upon the commission to require that the demolition delay ordinance be exercised to prevent premature demolition. This will allow any interested parties to investigate and assess all possibilities of restoration and reuse. I thank you for your consideration in this matter. Okay, is there any other thing, any other that we we're entering in? So we, ha we have another letter from Mr. Mark Spruell. So let me see if I can read that for you guys. Okay, thank you. So this one states it's from McKnight District Improvement Association Incorporated, 1030 Worthington Street. Again, this is from Mark Spruell. Yep. Uh, did you already read this one or did you read a, a different one from McKnight CDC? I just read the, that paragraph on page three. Is that the same one we're talking about? No, this is, this is a different one. Okay. okay. Well, Mark Spruell is in opposition to the demolition of 169 Princeton Street. Dear sirs, this is to add to voice of our association to the, those opposing the request appro requested approval of the demolition of 169 Princeton Street in our historic McKnight district. As you know, we are an, an association of residents and property owners dedicated to maintaining and improving our community. Regardless of race or ethnicity of those involved in the project, we feel that historically the McKnight, I'm sorry, the McKnight Historic District has succeeded because of being inclusive of black and white families and richer and poorer families. And we feel that this is the strategy needed to continue our community's success into the future. In the case of 169 Princeton Street, we have a, a very original McKnight that has been damaged by fire, whose owner apparently wants to demolish it, but needs your support to avoid the delay imposed by the demolition delay ordinance. Not only would this mean the demolition of another historic house, it would have meant, in addition, gap in the urban fabric in the core of the, our residential area. As you know, we are working to support development of living of a living museum to share our wonderful architect, architectural heritage with a larger audience. 169 Princeton Street is, is exactly the kind of house that we need to have preserved to make this project work. We need this house to remain there and be preserved. We do not need another vacant lot interrupting the architectural rhythm of our street. And we do not need another modern encroachment in our community. Therefore, we strongly urge you to deny this request. In addition, we urge you to use whatever means are available to ensure that the house is not demolished, whether this includes assisting the owners to obtain assistance from people experienced in repair, repairing houses damaged by fire, assisting the owners financially, possibly by using CPA funds that may be available if this is needed, or even working to add this property to the local historic district which as you know, it borders. We would support any of these approaches and if, a, if documentation of community is needed, we will work with you to obtain such documentation. We are disappointed that neighbors are not being allowed to speak on this matter due to the law department's in interpretation of the regulations for meetings during the pandemic, but we hope you will listen to our voice and those of others and see that this request to allow demolition is, is not approved. Sincerely yours, Mark Spruell. That's all the public commentary. I'd like to invite Foster White to tell us about his house. Yes, uh, can you repeat that? I, I didn't, I, I was writing something down. Can you repeat that please? Well, what I just said, I just said, I'd like to invite you to talk about your house. Okay, well, um, there isn't a whole lot to talk about. I mean, um, you know, the, the house was destroyed in a fire. Um, I was raised in that house um, at a very early age, along with my uh, parents and five uh, other siblings. Um, 
the neighborhood has been uh, a nice neighborhood um, in the earlier part of the years. Um, uh, it's, it's not the same, um, but the house has been uh, a major burden with the upkeep and um, trying to uh, keep it maintained uh, even before the fire. And uh, I, I feel I, I wouldn't be able to continue. Okay. Personally, I wouldn't be able to continue. I know you. you there was a uh, estimate for demolition in the in my packet here. Um, did you did you speak to did anybody about? Um, of course, that might be in the packet too. I just you know I thought I read through it fairly uh, closely, but did you speak, anybody give you estimates on reconstruction? <clears throat> Well, I, I've talked to a few people, and uh, even the claims adjuster for the insurance company, and he pretty much um, said, along with uh, someone who was there also um, looking at the place who does um, work on houses, that um, it would just suck up the insurance money and... Um, I would have to get a mortgage and, you know, which, you know, I, I'm, not, I'm not able to do, um, you know, it wouldn't be providing enough funds to, to take care of that house. So I'm already in my pocket now um, through the courts trying to uh, um, abide by the rules now and the law, which is board up the house, um, tarp the house, uh, you know, um, I, I was just uh, in a Zoom meeting with the uh, the courts on um, Tuesday, and um, now they're requesting that some more stuff be uh, needs to be done. Um, I do have insurance, but the insurance company is very slow right now. Yeah, and. Um, you know, uh, financially, is 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 you know, it's kind of costing me. You know, it's over my budget. Okay. Do any commissioners have questions of the petitioner, Mr. White? Yeah, Foster White, uh, Walter Kroll here. I'm sorry for your for your loss here. So, um, how many people have you had look at? I mean, we these houses are very unique. Not all contractors are created equal. Um, did you say you had one person look at it with the adjuster or have you had more than one? Well, there, there was one person, uh, who looked at it and there was another person who, uh, is a contractor who lives, actually lives in the neighborhood. He actually lives, uh, across the street on Cornell street and okay. he's a, a contractor and I, I've talked to him. Actually, he's, um, going to be, um, boarding it up uh, hopefully next week, which is the deadline to uh, finish boarding it up. So I've so talked he, to two yeah. people, actually actually three people. Um, one person was saying, the, the, uh, one guy was saying, he gave me some ideas about, you know, remodeling and, and turning it into a two family and, and um, uh, it was just, throwing some ideas at me but my I, I have already had it uh after discussing with the family as discussing with the family and everything which was the plan was to just do the demolition so typically when you look at stuff like this you would get something in writing from the contractor or several really you would want several contractors three or more that would give you something in writing with either good better or best on rebuilding it like it was maybe with some additions but do you have anything in writing from any contractors about what it would cost to rebuild no i don't i just talked to them verbally uh i've had one con i asked one contractor to come by there and and um not give me an estimate to rebuild but just um as far as securing the property um 
But as far as uh, there's one guy who verbally was talking to me, but I have nothing in writing. But, but uh, Mr. White, you were insured. The house was insured, correct? Yes, it was insured. Okay. Yeah. And the insurance company didn't isn't uh, pursuing the, the uh, doesn't have you pursuing the um, the restoration of the, of the property. No, they haven't talked to me about that. Um, okay. Like I was, I was saying, everything's pretty slow right now. Yeah. And um, I actually started going down to uh, the insurance company on uh, East Columbus Avenue, who's our Bella, and I just started complaining um, because it, it looks to me like um, they should have been the one to, well, <clears throat> um, Bay State, Restorations uh, had was supposed to board up the property and secure the property, and what all I know is they put up like eight pieces of board. They didn't even board up all the windows, and then they sent me a bill for like fifteen hundred dollars. And I'm like, I called the insurance company. I said they just put four pieces of board up at the windows, yeah. a lock on the front door, a lock on the back door, and so I, I sent them the bill and I talked to them. Part of the questions, part of what, what I'm interested in knowing is if there was any, if there were any contractors or structural engineers or, you know, professional people who, who inspected the property after the fire and, and in their opinion it, that it was not repairable. Um, I have not done that. Okay. Um, because it's one of the last things we choose to do is to, uh, you know, have a property be torn down. It, it's you know, the, the reason for the demo delay, it's a nine month delay, is to allow you as the owner to seek other alternative uh, uses, either sell it to somebody who wants to restore it or, or restore it yourself. I, I'm glad to hear that you were insured. I know that it, it, they're slow, but at least it was there. And we're, we also are, are concerned, or at least I'm concerned, that uh, there's no structural determination here. Um, you know, sometimes I do believe a property is burned beyond, you know, reasonable repair, but we don't know that. I don't know that in this case. I mean, I looked at the pictures, but I certainly have seen houses where pictures looked as bad or worse that were ultimately restored. But uh, without the professional uh, opinions of structural or, or contractors, uh, I'm not sure what, I, you know, what it, I, I would tend to not. Uh, release, release the delay. Um, any other commissioners? Mr. White, if, if we do allow the demolition of the property, what are your plans for the vacant lot? I would uh, keep the lot maintained and um, it'll just be just be a, a lot. Okay, thank you. I mean, for now, but I mean, and I don't know what will happen in the future, but um, it will just be a lot. Yeah, so you hadn't entertained the potential of rebuilding something on it. That's, that's possible too. All right. Okay. Any other commissioners have questions or comments for the petitioner? Okay, this is this is an application that we can actually vote on. We don't have to continue this to another hearing. Um, just in case anybody's wondering, any other commentary? Okay. I, I would like to say one thing. I would like to continue to uh, uh, another hearing just so I can look. This is my first time going through this. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I I understand. You know. <laughs> yes. Um, I would like to, you know, be more thorough with some guidance. Uh, right now, it's just, you know, my focus is on, you know, what the courts are asking me to do and trying to see what the insurance company is going to do. Sure. Um, I understand that, Mr. White. Yeah. And and we would, as a, as a commission, we would like you to go through that as well. Um, I mean, you can withdraw this request to, to lift the demo delay and just resubmit it at a later date if you'd like. Uh, but 
what we would love to see, what I would love to see, I say we, I mean I, Vinny, would love mm-hmm. to see is that the potential between insurance and, and whatever that you would to see what the real potential is to restore the building, unless there's some structural issue, you know, that is, that's kind of documented by an engineer is why that particular structure can't be saved. And, um, and then, you know, come back before us, if, if you find that information that it, either you've solved the problem by finding out that you can restore it, or you've found substantial information that might uh, or the argument may be that we would approve the, the lifting of the delay, then you can come before us with that. Okay. Uh, but um, I, I think that would be fabulous if you did that. And then you can also look at it to see if there's anybody that might want to buy the property from you as is, who is willing to restore it. Okay. Uh, because there are, you know, and I, and I apologize that somebody uh, approached you in a way that you felt was inappropriate, but there are people that, that so uh, appreciate the McKnight area that they, they really do have, you know, they they mean well. They want to, to maintain and restore and help people um, maintain mm-hmm. the property. So, um, but so you can tell me what you'd like to do. Uh, you know, we don't have to to vote. Uh, we don't have to vote on this. Uh, you could withdraw it until you get more information. Then you can submit if you find you need to submit another uh, application for the exemption. You could do so. Okay. Um. So yeah, so you would either have to state for the record that you're withdrawing your application, either or otherwise the commission will well, well, end their decision. Well, well, and and then again, I'm I'm involved with the courts, so I'm trying. They're giving me deadlines for a lot of you know, even that uh, deadlines for um, the plans. Uh, well, I. I I, my unfortunately, I wouldn't. It's not in our purview, and I really wouldn't know what what was happening there. But but normally, and I say normally because I'm not sure how your insurance coverage is. I know you've said you had it. Is the insurance company normally covers the boarding and securing of a building? So while you may be paying for it, they, from my general experience, they reimburse for the and pay to secure and board and tarp a building. Uh, but so Alvin if you could give him those options again I'd appreciate it so yeah once again either you would have to de- definitively um, state that you are going to withdraw your application otherwise the commission will have to render de- a decision tonight okay well let me withdraw my uh, application and then we'll revisit this after nine months or is no, there no, no, a time no, no, frame? No, no. No, the, if if we the, the delay is for nine months. If we voted not to lift it, you you wouldn't be able to you wouldn't be able to demolish for nine months. If you withdraw your petition to to lift that delay, we're, we're not going to vote one way or another. It's just to give you a chance to see if there are legitimate other options. Like I said, either you can if an engineer or somebody tells you the property really can't be distri- uh, restored bring that to us, we can use that in our deliberations before we vote. Or you might find that there are legitimate options that could restore the house. And that's why there's a delay. So it's when we don't rush to tear something down, it gives somebody time to find out all the options. And if you find out, if you don't find sufficient options, then you can refile to have the delay uh, uh, lifted. Uh, if you have, you know, if you feel like there's a reason to that we would do it, bring us the information, and then we could take a vote then. But but I would pre- I appreciate that you're willing to uh, you know look into other potential options and then come back to us. So for the record, Alvin, I I believe he withdrew his application to lift the the demo delay and he will he will is going to do some research and, and come back before us is that correct mr white all right so i'll accept that his application. It, 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 excuse me go ahead sir yeah i hear what what'd you say uh i was just thinking 
That's okay. It's this is something that takes a lot of thought. What the stuff you're in the middle of right now is it takes a lot of thinking. So, and we understand that. Um, but no, I was just saying to Alvin to, that for the record that we that you had were withdrawing your application to have the demo delay lifted, and that you would come back before us with more information. In, in the right. Right. Okay. Okay. Well, okay. Thank yeah. You. Okay. You, I, right. I understand now. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And I just you know just. You, you might find that it's quite possible to restore your property. So that would be good. So, anyway. okay. All right. So you, we're all set on that. Alvin, you have that as a, as a withdrawal. Yes. Okay. What's next on here? Other matters properly before protocols for historical review of municipal projects. So I'm sorry, there's a couple of things. Uh, we do have Mr. Line on the call. Um, I, he's for here, I believe for 220 State Street, we did already, or the commission voted on that matter and approved it. So I just want to make sure you understand that and, uh, you know, that you're just not on the call for no reason. So okay. thank you. Yep. No problem. Oh, oh that's right. Mr. Lyon. Okay. That, yeah. that one's all set. And, and secondly, I just wanted to see if we can uh, take out of order um, the Forest Park mail. I agree. I was just thinking that same thing. Um, <laughs> And we, we, we can take that out of order. Let's do the postmaster requirements of handrails and force park. Who's, who's uh, joining us for that? So we have Miss Joanna Stober from Joanna. the okay. uh, Forest Park branch uh, post office. I believe she may be on mute. If you can unmute yourself. Joanne, are you with us? Can you hear me? Oh, yeah, there, there I you am. Are. Sorry, yes, you guys. Can. It's okay. Go Little ahead. Technology. So, so uh, a couple months ago, we had an issue. Um, well, we've had a few issues out in, in all of Springfield, um, but where a carrier fell was injured severely from falling down stairs. So unfortunately in haste, a letter was sent out to approximately 40 residents of the Forest Park area. And we've since rectified that. Um, but what we're looking for is just safe delivery of the mail for our carriers so that they don't have to, because of the three or more stairs requirement without a hand railing. Um, Alvin actually was very helpful and I we're, Really, we only have a couple of houses that um, we're still holding the mail for, um, where we just and not necessarily mandating the handrails, but putting the putting the mail receptacle, which in some cases happens to be a wicker basket, which is a, is in itself a little bit different. But um, I, I, I mean, I don't know. Again, we've only had probably three or four houses that are not in compliance right now with it. It's been going very well. Gary's happy. We're happy. The residents seem to be happy. Um, so I don't know. I, maybe you all have a question for me. So again, I think this affects something like 30 to 40 uh, residents in the Forest Park area that happen to be in the, in the Forest Park Heights district. I did speak to the Forest Park Civic Association just to give them some guidance as to how they could remedy the, the situation. I did direct them to the City of Springfield website, particularly the page of the Historical Commission, and I showed them the handrail guidelines. And again, on, on those guidelines, there are a couple of options where if you put a, excuse me, a black pipe handrail, uh, that can be resolved under non-applicability. Also, if you put a uh, black metal um, railing with spindles, that will also um, come under non-applicability. Um, if you're putting a wood handrail, it would have to match the railing system on, on, the, on the porch. That would fall under appropriateness, so that would have to come before you guys. So that was explained to the uh, Forest Park Civic Association, and hopefully those folks can then distribute the information out to the community. Okay. But there, there was also a, a second letter that went out that, that did give that information of how they can contact uh, our office and we could walk them through the steps. Okay, so it sounds almost like we've done, Alvin has done, 
and between Alvin and, and, and uh, Joanna that most of this has been resolved for the time being. It absolutely and that, has. And that everybody understands what steps must be taken if, if there is still a couple of properties that need resolution. On my end, it certainly is. And they've been very, very understanding. Um, it actually was enjoyable for me. And I'll, I won't talk long. But to get out there and see how beautiful those homes are. And in no way was our intention to ever deface or change anything of the home. I we just have to. So that was, but yes, I think pretty much we're good. And, and again, we're, we're giving people plenty of time to do whatever they need to. So. Okay. Well, thank you very much for joining us. And, and that's it. anything else you'd like to add, Al, Alvin? No, we just wanted to bring this to you, to you guys' attention because we may get, yeah. you know, applications in for this. So just so you guys understand that. Right. What happened. Yeah. That yeah. They, that they kind of, they stopped delivering mail because of an injury and now they've resolved most of them, which is good. Anybody else want yeah. to come? Anybody else questions or anything on the mail before we move on? No? Okay, we're going to move on to the protocols for historic review of municipal homes. I'd like to, to uh, introduce you to Kara Holmes. If you'd like to tell us about yourself, it'd be great. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Kira Holmes. I'm part of the Springfield Preservation Trust. I'm the Advocacy and Community Engagement Coordinator. Uh, if I'm not speaking loud enough, please tell me I can project more. I promise. I just want to make sure. You're so good. I, go ahead. I said you're okay. Okay. Uh, so I wanted to talk about the municipal protocol, and I want to talk a little bit about the history of it first, just briefly, which essentially this protocol came into place when a tornado hit Springfield. Uh, the Springfield Historical Commission at the time then decided they wanted to do a few different things because of that. They wanted to do a historic survey. Uh, they wanted better involvement in projects and a, excuse me, and a, a disaster fund. This came about by, Br I want to say Brana, the director. She's the one who signed off on this only with those three things going into effect. So everyone was sent a copy of the uh, municipal protocol, but I'm just going to read briefly from it. God. I, I swear, just briefly, not too much, I promise. <laughs> Hang in so, there, Bill. So the Springfield Historical Commission shall be provided an opportunity to conduct timely and effective reviews and to discuss concepts, initiatives, plans, or specifications that will affect municipally owned or funded projects involving buildings constructed prior to 1950, uh, before services related to demolition, rehabilitation, reconstruction, or disposition of such buildings built before 1950. Department responsible for the projects shall notify the commission and provide the following information which is the address of the building, department name, contact person, address, email, way to contact them back, a description of the proposal, whether it be demolition, rehabilitation, reconstruction, or disposition, whether the city owns the building or is funding a project related to that building, the year the building was constructed, and then as follows the next scheduled commission meeting, but no later than 30 days after receipt of a notification Commission shall meet to determine whether such building is historically significant and whether the proposed activity will have an adverse effect on the building. So I've been in my position for about two months. So I know I don't know everything about Springfield. Mm -hmm. And I haven't really seen this carried out all the way with some matters. And if you want, I can give an example as to that. Please but, do. Thank you. Okay. So the example I'm going to give is just recently, the city put out bids for boilers in historic schools. And I can bring that up too. I did not submit that as part of this talk today, but I, I apologize. I probably should have. So one of the bids is for 58 Hartford Terrace, Springfield, Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. uh, the school was 
built in 1928. As far as I know, Springfield Historical Commission was not informed of this improvement to the building. Okay. Um, I don't mean, I apologize for interrupting. Uh, the commission normally ha doesn't, wouldn't have that in its purview anyway. It's any change to anything visible by a public way or park. So, and I know there's examples of that that they've missed as well, but the the replacing of a boiler I don't think falls under the the uh, description of what would come before us because it's not altering the visual in any way. That's fine. I have a follow up example too. Yes, go uh, ahead. It actually applies to any. I I checked through the protocol. Yeah. It, it's routine. Essentially, if it's routine fixes, it doesn't apply. But this one seems like a bigger fix instead of a routine fix, which is why I brought it up as an example. Okay, I understand. So the other one is the city block funding. Mm -hmm. uh, there were a few properties that have used city block funding that have not come to Springfield Historical Commission. And one of them was 74 Irvington Street. Okay. And they made they made repairs to the exterior. Yes. Without Alvin, do you know off offhand if anything came that just fell under non applicability, so we might not have had a hearing on some of the some of those. That particular item never came before the commission. Okay, I think part of what what we're trying to to get at here, and just correct me if I'm wrong here, is that that these departments aren't giving us the information that they think that that we're supposed to get. Yes. It's not, and it's not a function that's that's operating appropriately at this time. Is that correct? That is correct. At least, again, I've only been in, in this position okay. for months, so I'm not pointing fingers. It's <laughs> not, <laughs> I think everyone in the city does a great job. I just think that maybe we need to just make everyone aware of this protocol. You know, maybe people don't know about it, or maybe they just didn't know who's supposed to enact it from their department. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. Nor am I. I do have a possible resolution or suggestion, if I may. Offer. You you may. I'm giving you. I'm going to give you the time you need. Go ahead. So what I was going to suggest, um, Vinny, if you wouldn't mind, maybe you and I could work on a letter that could be distributed to all the departments in City Hall, just asking them to look over the protocol you know read it yeah I, I would i would suggest that we can work on a letter or you can actually work on a letter but it, it is subject to the review and an open meeting and and a vote by the commission as to whether it would be submitted to the departments or not okay. uh, just a, that's just a technical clarification that i can't write a letter and send it the commission right, can well. can do that yeah but i'd be happy to do that with you Okay, uh, so if I if we do that, does that mean I should attend the next commission meeting? I assume, or well, um, yeah. Well, at some point, if if there's a letter that you feel should be sent, and I'm saying you for a reason, uh, you feel is ready to be sent to address this situation, it then has to be read and and discussed in the commission meeting. If the letter is ready for that, uh, that's not subject to. Uh, the public hearing, uh, so it's not something we'd have to give. Correct me if I'm wrong, anybody out there. Uh, we wouldn't have to, you know, we're not notifying anybody, so it could come on the next agenda as long as it got there, you know, before the agenda got sent out. There's no notice time on that. Yeah, so it could come under all other matters. I, I would just need to post it at least 48 hours prior to the meeting date. Okay, there you go. If I thought it was two days. Yeah, 48 hours before the meeting date. Um, are there any other are there any other examples you have that um, that you, do you have any others prepared to talk talk to us about just so we can get a feel for what's the, the, like the how many how many of the properties do you think it is? Uh, so there was another city block funding property that wasn't a, that wasn't uh, notified you weren't notified about which was three forty five um, Bay Street. Okay. And let me double check though on that address, okay. I apologize. I'm not gonna hold you to it. I was just wondering how many, that in your short tenure there, how many you had found. And the, the city block funding that she's referring to is CDPG, uh, Community Development Block Grant. 
All right. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Kroll, you had a comment? So okay. is the is the process drop in the building department where the funding goes for in some kind of an improvement? I guess it technically not everything would get a permit if it's just doing maintenance, but um, if it was if it was a significant change and the building department was contacted, that would be that would be one of the drops here, right? So, uh, at least according to the municipal protocol, you should be informed by whichever department director is uh, making the change. Is how it should go, and you should be notified thirty days. Uh, essentially, you should be notified, and then you have thirty days to respond before technically any action is taken. I guess so my way question would. I guess my question will go back, Alan, if you know, it would be a building department question. If, if the municipal department is going to do work on its own building, does the building department still have to be contacted? I'm assuming they would, even though it's a municipal building. They would be contacted, but there are other city departments that handle the CDBG funding. Right. And if they're getting CDBG funding, then we're I know we're supposed to see what they're doing if, if as long as it's exterior, we're supposed to see it anyways. Right. Because so I'm we just have, asking actually, we have we actually have had a couple of these come. If I if I'm not mistaken, we've had a few of these come. I guess the question is, are some of them that's and that's where I think Kira is going with this is that is that for every one that comes before us, there's obviously some that, that didn't that don't, quite yeah. make it. And why didn't they quite make it? Is there sure. an issue in process? Is the process intermittent? Right. So, OK, well, I, I think that's not a bad plan, Kira. I'm going to actually count on you to put your ideas of what the letter should be. Okay. Um, and I, we'd be happy to put it back on the agenda and. Um, see what we can do you know we may have to have a legal review and it may have to have a vote what has to have a vote before we can send the letter out but we could we would i my suggestion before any letter like that went out is that it be you know submitted and looked at by the attorney shoot chuck or, or somebody else um but that's the that's the process we should take and, and i don't mind taking it so so i think we can do that 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 sounds wonderful. Thank you. Like I said, I just want to make sure that I can help the best I can. That's okay. all. Well, well, that's good. I think we're, I think we're all set for that. And I think we're all set for, there's nothing else on this meeting. Anybody else, anything, anyone wants to add? Just could you uh, <clears throat> send me the, the documents you were referencing? Cause I haven't seen any, anything that Kira, that the protocols and, and any of that, could you just send that over to, uh, to me or, or if Alvin, do you have Alvin, that? Alvin has it. Oh, okay. All right. Yes. Okay. Never mind. Yes. That, that's all from my, my end. Okay. That sounds good. Anybody else? Well, that's it. Then I'd entertain a motion to adjourn. Thank all you. Moved. All right. You're welcome, Karen. I appreciate you. All right. All in yeah. favor? Uh, <laughs> all right. Hey, all have right. good holidays if we don't talk to anybody between happy now and the beginning. Holidays, of the everybody. Happy Festivus. <laughs> That's right. The rest of us for the rest of us. Happy uh, holidays, everyone. Thank you again. You, Merry Christmas, everybody. Yeah. Happy yep. Hanukkah. You. See you. See you. See you guys. All right.